Hello YouTube, hello you, hello tube. Um, my name is May and this is my vlog on my pathway to find out whether I'm neurodiverse in any sense. I'm doing this vlog because I've noticed with the years that I'm starting to lose connection with myself. I'm saying less and less because I think that my opinion is probably stupid and um, I'm terrified actually of being stupid or coming across as stupid and so I'm realizing that I'm living my life on these premises I'm trying to cover up the whole time that I'm stupid or I mustn't seem stupid. I mustn't ask a stupid question. I mustn't say anything stupid. Etc, etc, etc. And um, that's why it's important to me to do this vlog, to speak and to hear and see myself speak and to share it with you if you are in a similar position maybe especially a woman who is wondering about her own neurodiversity because traditionally we are not really diagnosed with neurodiversity we are better at masking, we are better at pretending and um, friends of mine recently, friends and colleagues have been very surprised when I've told them that I want to do this assessment and they say, you? Why? Why is it important to you to, for you to know whether you're neurodiverse? Come on, you're not neurodiverse. You don't have autism. I know people that have autism. You don't have autism. Why is it important to you what other people think of you? I saw a beautiful TED talk, of course I can't remember the name of the person, she was an Australian person, and she said, my autism doesn't disable me, it is society that disables me. I thought that was put very, very well. I am, I am... So if I'm talking about myself, I'm obviously the person that I am. But if I have learnt as a small child that I can't be the person that I am, I have to change, then that is very sad. And that is a reflection on society rather than me. And um, that's also why I'm so very taken by people like Hannah Gatsby or Temple Grandin that speak freely, that speak their minds, and that that have identified that society is not giving very much space to people like me, women like me, and possibly you. <clears throat> I wanted to talk about feeling dead inside. And I spoke to another friend of mine about feeling dead inside. And um, it's not that I can't feel anything at all. It's not that I can't see what you are feeling. But when it comes to having a preference, often there is no preference present. When I know that I should feel excited, often there is no excitement. And uh, there is, there can be a feeling of numbness, I suppose, which is also associated with depression. Um, in my therapy sessions, we often talk about the thoughts versus the emotions 
And often I feel that when I talk about something that should be sad or that should be or that should create sad feelings in me or should create mad feelings in me or happy feelings in me, the emotion is simply not present. A bit like my thoughts that I can't necessarily track. The thought is not accessible to me straight away. And it seems that the emotion is also not available to me straight away. So is it because I have been burying them? Or is it a trait of a condition that I have? Certainly, it's something that's quite new. Maybe 10 years old, maybe 15 years old. Certainly not something that I... I don't think of myself as a numb child or a quiet child. But, I, oh, one more thing. I was going to talk to the uh, psycho, psychiat psychologist that was going to do the assessment last week. And uh, she forgot to call me. And when I was calling her, she didn't respond, and she hasn't responded to my messages, um, which is now making me think, well, if I'm going to spend £1,600 on an assessment, then at least I would like um, a phone call to work. Very sad. Anyway, let's see what happens with that, and uh, goodbye, and see you soon.